In my previous video, I showed how to clean the switch contacts on the sweep range switch of this Kenwood SM220 station monitor. Now, some of the folks that watched that video made comments that they'd like to understand more about what this device can do uh, in the ham radio shack. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The SM220 is effectively just a very basic oscilloscope, but with added features that make it especially useful in the ham radio shack. One of the most common applications for the SM220 is for a transmit signal monitor. Uh, in this case, the transmit signal is routed through the back of the instrument, and the, the RF signal is capacitively coupled to the vertical deflection plates of the oscilloscope trace. And this allows you to look at the RF envelope of your transmitted signal, such as I'm doing here with a single sideband signal being transmitted into a dummy load. Uh, the RF power is represented vertically, and then the horizontal is just uh, representing time, and we can see the RF envelope. Uh, this can be really useful to look for things like flat topping if you overdrive uh, the signal and that type of thing, but it's a good way just to do a quick check to be sure that the transmitter is operating properly. Another common RF monitoring application is the trapezoid function to look at the linearity of a power amplifier. Now, I don't have a power amplifier here to demonstrate, uh, but I'll put a link below to a video that I found on YouTube that shows how to use that function. But essentially, the transmitter or exciter is fed through the back of the device, as well as the output of the amplifier. And when the uh, monitor is in the trapezoid function, you get waveforms that look like this. This is where the RF output power is represented vertically from the power amplifier, and then the exciter input power is represented horizontally. And ideally, you'd get this nice linear shape that would indicate a linear output power change versus a linear voltage change at the input. If you do not have things adjusted properly, you can get things like flat topping of the amplifier, or you know, even show things like insufficient grid bias on the, uh, the way the amplifier is adjusted. One other function that I use quite often is the band scope feature. Uh, this is an optional feature and actually requires a module to be installed uh, in the instrument here and it basically turns the scope into a dedicated spectrum analyzer to look at RF activity across uh, a portion of the intermediate frequency stage of the transceiver. There were two band scope adapters available for the SM220. One that was des designed for the uh, TS500 series like the 520 and 530 uh, that is used to monitor the 3.395 megahertz IF uh, from that transceiver line. And then the other one called the BS8 is the 8.83 megahertz IF module. And that can look at the 8.83 megahertz IF out of the TS800 series uh, of Kenwood transceivers like the 820, the 830. I've got this hooked into my TS870 right now looking at some band activity across the, uh, in this case, the 40 meter band. Now, of course, more modern rigs and especially the uh, software defined radios have got really nice pan adapters with waterfall displays and things like this, but uh, this functionality predated that by uh, a good 20, 25 years or more. Now, if I simply tune across, we can see how I can move those signals across the screen by tuning uh, through them. And as I get each one to the center of the screen, we can kind of hear it on the, uh, on the receiver. A couple of strong signals over here. That's actually a, a shortwave broadcast signal at 7.36 megahertz. If we can work our way back. We can listen to potentially some single sideband signals and things like that across the band here. That guy right there is at uh, 7.160. You can adjust the frequency span that the pan adapter is looking at in two steps. You can look at plus or minus 20 kilohertz around the center frequency or plus or minus 100 kilohertz around the center frequency. Now other functions include just your basic oscilloscope functionality. It's a single channel oscilloscope and uh, I would say it's limited in terms of what it can do because it's not calibrated. There's no calibrated vertical scale here. There's just a, a variable setting for the attenuator. Uh, either no attenuation or one tenth or one one hundredth or to simply put it in the monitor mode. So you don't really have a voltage reference unless you apply something else yourself. Similarly on the horizontal scale you just have a sweep range 
So in this, in this position here, the horizontal sweep range will vary from 10 hertz to go, you know, going very slowly to 100 hertz. And then you've got 100, 100 to 1K, 1K to 10K, 10K to 100K, but no calibrated horizontal time scale. Uh, similarly, there's no trigger input. Uh, it's kind of an injection lock type oscillator that takes a the synchronization as a piece of the input signal. It's called a recurrent sweep scope. So limited functionality, but could be used as a basic oscilloscope. You'll notice that the oscillator function also shares a position with what's called RTTY. The scope could be used uh, back in the day for helping to tune in RTTY signals, which were some of the earlier uh, digital modes that uh, were popular and still, still somewhat popular today. Uh, the RTTY mode would also be entered by switching to RTTY over here. And what this does, it puts the scope into XY mode. Uh, and again, I don't have an RTTY demodulator here, so I can't demonstrate this feature. But what that would do is the mark and space signals would be applied to the essentially the X and Y inputs. And you'd get essentially uh, kind of crossed bananas type of a display when you properly tune in an RTTY signal. And finally, the scope also includes a two-tone signal generator that uh, whose output is on this one-eighth uh, phono jack here, and it could output a low-level one kilohertz tone as well as a low-level 1.575 kilohertz tone, or to put them out uh, simultaneously. And they're designed; they're pretty low-level. They're designed to be like microphone level, about five millivolts or so. They could be used as test audio sources when you're working on a transmitter, just to kind of to get things adjusted right, uh, maybe in an RF, in a uh, audio preamp or something like that. And then the two-tone test can be useful to look at things like linearity of not only the audio chain, but in a power amplifier chain. And I've done a video on uh, on basic two-tone testing in the past, so we could uh, I'll put a link for that one down below as well. Yeah, so there you have a basic overview of what the Kenwood SM220 station monitor is all about. Kenwood did make a later version of this called the SM230. It's a little bit larger, had a larger rectangular uh, CRT, and also had the pan adapter function built in as opposed to being an optional module that you'd add to the unit. Other radio manufacturers such as Yesu and uh, even Heathkit made their own versions of station monitors that had similar functionality. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, learned a little something about what the station monitor is all about. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do so. And tell your friends, and we'll look for you next time. Thank you.